In this lecture, we'll talk about the practice of close reading. Close reading is a form of explication and analysis that we often apply to prose texts. Just as you did with your poetry explications, you'll begin a close reading of a literary text by carefully examining the text itself. You'll identify significant details, images, and patterns gathering data or evidence. And then you'll interpret your observations by explaining how these details, imagery, and patterns work to create meaning in the text. In other words, close reading involves inductive reasoning, moving from the observation of specific facts and details to a theory or interpretation based on those observations. Let's return to some of the ideas about interpretation that I introduced in the intro audio lecture to Unit 2. Very simply defined, interpretation is the act of finding meaning. I'm using the word act because interpretation is always active. Meaning is not something hidden inside a text that we have to discover. Instead, we help to produce meaning when we read or view a text. Interpretation is collaborative. It requires an author, a text, and a reader to produce meaning. This might seem confusing. I often have students ask, but what about the author's intention? Isn't it true that the author's ideas about their own work are the right ones? We can't say that a text means something other than what its author intended it to mean. This is a good question and one that you may return to as you encounter various texts over the course. In order to answer this question of intention, I want to give you a principle or idea about language. The idea is that words, texts, and symbols actively mean. It is an inherent property of language that it always means something in and of itself. In other words, language carries meaning with it. It is not subject to intention and it can never be completely controlled. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I buy a t-shirt with a racial slur on it, but I don't know that it's a racial slur because I've never heard the word before. I buy the t-shirt simply because I like the color and design and it's on sale. If I wear this shirt to a party, not intending to offend anyone, is the shirt still offensive? Of course it is. Although my intentions were innocent, the word on the shirt carries its own meaning with it, and my intentions can't control that meaning. This is an extreme example, but the principle behind it applies to all texts. An author's intention can and should influence our interpretations, but it's not the final word. Instead, we want to look closely at the text itself and find meanings there. Close reading is a practice through which we can do this. It involves looking closely at the text, combining explication with analysis, as you seek to understand the various implications of the text. It's important to carefully and rigorously tie our interpretations to what exists in the text itself in an effort to avoid reading into the text meanings that aren't there. We want to avoid imposing our own biases and assumptions. Your textbook addresses some of these ideas about interpretation in chapter 11, and it uses a comparison to a video game that just as a video game may allow for many different ways of advancing to the next level, so literature allows for many different interpretations. But there are still limits. It's not that anything goes, but rather that by focusing your attention in different ways, you can see different meanings. Some interpretations are better than others. And in order to create a strong interpretation, you have to tie your ideas closely to the text itself. Remember the detective metaphor that we talked about earlier? Close reading involves using the text as evidence 
to support your theories about it. All of this is to say, don't determine your conclusion before you do your close reading. Instead, let your ideas come from your close examination of the text. Your goal with interpretation is not to get it right, rather it's to articulate valid and persuasive ideas about the text you're analyzing. Because we're working with prose texts now, which are often, though not always, longer texts than poetry is, it's a good idea to start with just a section of the text. This will allow you to give more attention to the details because you're working with a paragraph rather than a whole short story or a couple of pages rather than a whole novel. For your close reading assignments for this module, the section of the text has already been chosen for you and you're going to practice a six step process for close reading. Step one is paraphrase. Explain the passage in your own words. What's going on here? What does it say? For this step, you want to stick with just the facts. Don't try to interpret yet. Keep it really literal. Step two is observe. Notice the details. Look for significant words, surprising or meaningful language or sentence construction, unexpected or important patterns. You've already practiced this with your poetry explications and you'll be using some of those same techniques here. Step three is contextualize. Think about relevant facts or background information for the text. Step four is analyze. Select a few significant textual elements or contextualizing frameworks from your notes and explain how each of them is important to the meaning of the text. This is the moment where you're moving towards interpretation by articulating how particular details work to create meaning. Step five is argue. Write a thesis, a central claim that offers an overall interpretation of the literary text, and then use your observations and analysis to support your thesis. Finally, step six is reflect. Go back through the text and identify elements that your interpretation doesn't fully account for. What did you leave out? What do you still find confusing? What do you wonder about? This last step reminds you to keep an open mind with your interpretations and to not become blinded by your own perspective. And it also might suggest new ideas or connections you hadn't thought of previously. Your assignment for this module is to complete two close reading workshops, practicing these six steps on two texts that you already worked on in unit one. So they'll be familiar texts to you and you'll be able to use these workshops to dive deeper into your thinking about and understanding of those texts.